Greetings! Today we're going to talk about light. And why are we going to talk about light? We've been talking about electrons. Well, it turns out that light and electrons are very much related. So, let's talk about light. All right, in order to understand the behavior of electrons, we have to know a little bit about light. And first of all, we're going to talk about electromagnetic radiation, which includes the visible light, but it includes many other types of radiations, which in fact behave the same way as light. All right. There are waves of energy, electromagnetic radiation waves of energy includes light, electricity, magnetism, all of those are included. All right, so this is a beautiful representation of the visible light spectrum. And from your physics, you should remember that the colors are related to the name, of, to this fellow's name, Roy G. Biff. The colors of the spectrum tell us the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation. Now, take a look at this, and we look at the wavelengths as, notice this side has very long wavelengths, 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 2nd, 10 to the uh, minus 6, and so on, but these are long and low frequency, we'll come back to that. And these are very short, gamma rays. They include radio waves, radar, uh, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays. All of these are included in what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. It'd be kind of cool if we could see all of these. Who knows how we would interpret it, how our eyes would interpret, say, radio waves, which are really long waves. But... Our eyes can only detect this little section. In fact, I believe, I believe that snakes can see in the infrared spectrum section, which is interesting. But how would we know what they see? Go ask a snake. I don't know. Here are some of the general properties of light. And, in fact, when I say light, I'm talking about all forms of electromagnetic radiations because they all behave in the same manner. So, they can travel through empty space. They all travel at the same speed, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. In addition, they have wavelengths. And what we're talking about is a wavelength is the distance between two crests. And you have probably seen this in your science classes before, but this is the what we refer to as wavelength. And we use the lambda symbol like that to represent what the wavelength. Then we have the frequency. They all have a certain frequency, and that indicates how many peaks pass through a certain point per given time. Go. Well, we're here on the beautiful bay shore right across the street from Academy, and I'm just looking at the waves, and there aren't too many, they're not too high today. The uh, wavelength is um, very low, uh, low wavelength today, and, but sometimes you have greater waves, uh, darker wavelengths. And the same idea applies to the electromagnetic radiation that we've been talking about. We've been talking about wavelength, and frequency and amplitude, but what I want to talk to you about is frequency because that often confuses students. Uh, waves per second, for example, is what we would measure uh, frequency in. So if I'm standing at the beach and the waves are hitting me, if the waves are coming at me and every time they hit me, I'm going to clap. They go. That's going to be less energy than if the waves are hitting me like this. So that's what frequency is all about. See you later. The ampli 
amplitude is the height of the wave. When we talk about amplitude in sound, we're talking about how loud the sound is. In light, we also refer to amplitude as the height of the wave. So depending on how high the wave is, a very high wave or a shorter wave. Okay. Not shorter, sorry, not shorter, referring to uh, wavelength, but this height, the amplitude. All right, so take a look at this now. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. So if we have a high frequency, a frequency is how often those, those uh, waves are hitting you. And um, the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. So notice that these are passing through, boom, 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 great frequency. These are a little slower, uh, longer wavelength. The color of light is de determined by the wavelength. So depending on the length of the wavelength, for example, red would be to the order of 400 nanometers, and say ultraviolet, or violet, I'm sorry, would be uh, in the order of 700 nanometers. So it depends, the wavelength determines the color of the emission. All right, so emission of light, what does that entail? Well, we're talking about electrons absorbing energy from a source. We'll, we'll talk about that, absorbing some energy and getting really excited, okay? They get really excited and they jump to a higher level because electrons are at one level here, and then they get really excited and jump to the next level. But the point is that they have to come back down. We call this the excited state, this, this is the ground state. So since they get really excited, boom, they jump to a higher level, boom, they have to drop back down, back down. As they drop back down, they release a photon. All right, and we're gonna talk about what a photon is in the next slide. But these are some of the things that you need to remember. Wavelengths of light carry different amounts of energy per photon. So the color that you see when that photon is released depends on the amount of energy that that photon has. And that energy has a certain color. The energy in the photon corresponds to the change in energy that the photon experiences, excited to ground. So as it comes from here to here, excited to ground, depending on how much energy, that's the wavelength that will be emitted. The energy level of all the atoms are quantized. That's a new word for you, and I'm going to show you a slide on that. All right, the best way that I can explain this is that Electrons have a certain amount of energy. They either have this energy or this much energy. Never anything in between. So picture a turtle. A turtle coming down an incline. It's continuous energy. That's not what the electrons have. The electrons have either this amount of energy or this amount of energy. You can't have a turtle kind of in the middle somewhere. It's either on this step on the stairs or on the next step, because it'll just fall. It'll bloop and it'll fall to the next one. So when we say that energy is quantized, what we're talking about is that the energy is a specific amount of energy. No in-between energies here. Electromagnetic radiation then, to summarize, has both characteristics of waves and particles. So that's why we have discussed the energy, the wavelengths, the relationship to light. In class, we're going to see some applications of energy. I want you to think of a beam of light as a stream, a small packet of photons. And a photon is basically a particle of light, a little particle way, way smaller than an electron. A little packet that is thrown out. So in class, ask me, because I will do these demonstrations for you. Now, what I would like you to do is take a moment to write down your
perception or your understanding, write a summary of your understanding of what light is and how it relates to the electrons. Oh yeah, so I'm driving home and listening to the radio and thinking about electromagnetic radiation. It's pretty much everywhere. And this radio receives the radio waves and turns them into sound waves. But the radio waves are just like the light we've been talking about. It's just one more type of electromagnetic radiation. Pretty much very much the same as the visible light that we see. And I'm here in traffic and looking at electromagnetic radiation. Uh, some of it is visible here, of course, and some is not. But I'm, I'm seeing here a red color and there is red light up there, of course. I can't go anywhere right now. And soon it'll be green and then there are other lights over here and we have the traffic uh, coming on and there's all colors of light in this area. As I approach this intersection, take a look, there's more lights. Uh, there's green and red and yellows and all kinds of different wavelengths being emitted because that is what color is. The emission of light. Uh, the emission of these rays of light that travel in waves and they have and as I as I think about electromagnetic radiation I think about this animal hospital where I bring Tupac and uh, they perform all kinds of x-rays here uh, so x-rays are another form of electromagnetic radiation and it's kind of dark but I don't know if you can distinguish, that's a cell phone tower, which again is putting out electromagnetic radiation. So, it's pretty much everywhere. So I finally made it home, and I'm still thinking about electromagnetic radiation, because now I'm going to put my leftovers in the microwave, which emits electromagnetic radiation, and I'm going to have a nice dinner. So, as you can see, electromagnetic radiation is everywhere. But the thing is that, wouldn't it be cool if we could see it all? Not just the visible spectrum, not just the colors that we see. If we could see radio waves and then the stuff being put out by the, the cell phone towers and all of those radiations, that'd be kind of cool. Even though the radio ones would be really long. See you later.